Hey, I'm coming at you from the webcam dimension again to tell you about the interview you're about to watch with Terry Wolfinger. A little while back, I had the pleasure of speaking to Greg Off, a founding member of Game Fan Magazine. And just recently, I also got in contact with Terry Wolfinger, the original artist for Game Fan. We sat down for a pretty lengthy discussion, and this video is just a condensed highlights reel. The rest of the interview, the full thing, will be available on my podcast channel, Sourcast, and there you'll be able to hear some extra stories and some more background about Terry and his work with places like Stan Winston Studios. Thank you to Terry for coming on, and I hope everyone enjoys this look into a little more of the behind the scenes of Game Fan. Yeah, I, I enjoyed your um, your documentary. That was, that was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I, I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much for reaching out and agreeing to uh, come on here and do an interview. I, uh, I I did one previously with Greg Off, and he was wonderful to have on. <laughs> I, I watched Greg Off interview too. And that's the first one I watched. And I was like, oh. And so then I asked him if he could send me the link to the, the other one. And yeah. Right. Thank you. Good, well, good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Terry Wolfinger. I'm an artist. And the pertinence of this interview, I'm assuming, is uh, way back when I was the art director slash illustrator for Game Fan magazine. And you were, uh, you were a founding member of Game Fan, basically. But technically, yes. Yeah. yeah. You were on that first issue. First issue helped design some of the sections and obviously did that first cover <laughs> mm -hmm. before we even get to to game fan what was your career in art before you met any of these people i was um an animator first i went to school for character animation at cal arts during my last semester at uh, at college i um, got involved with a a heavy metal video magazine <laughs> um this is circa like 89 or so. So it was, it was, um, sold on videotape and it was a, you know, a video magazine. So it was full of interviews and uncensored videos and things like that. It was kind of ahead of its time. And in between the, um, the articles and the interviews were these little animated, uh, bumpers, these little interstitials that would lead you to the next segment. And so I was, I was in charge of doing those. And the project was called hard and heavy. some other animation for different companies, special effects animation. Um, and so I was kind of a, a freelance artist when uh, when George George met me. The confusion with George Weising, I'm jumping ahead, <laughs> yeah. Think, thinking that I worked for Heavy Metal Magazine. I, I worked for <laughs> a heavy metal video magazine yeah. <laughs> called Hard and Heavy, but... That was such a funny part of the story, was that you yeah. were technically hired under false pretenses, not due to you, but because George misremembered what you said. <laughs> right, right. And so, you know, I was getting these questions like, you know, what's it like? I'm like, oh, well, I, I don't know. I've never worked. There. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, oh, no, no. I... <laughs> yeah. I was probably like maybe 23. Oh, wow. So you'd already... That's quite a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Like professionally. I'm 22. <laughs> and I feel like uh, it's got like... <laughs> well, yeah, I, it's funny. I When I was going to school, you know, I I noticed that the school had a job board, you know, where mm -hmm. job listings would get posted to the board looking for artists. And I was like, are you kidding? You get paid for this? <laughs> <laughs> so I went out for every job, you know, any job that came through, I... I went after just just because you know I didn't have any money. <laughs> it was very expensive to go to school. I, I wasn't working because it was a very full course load. You know, I was just shopping at a, a local video game shop, and I, I had a leather jacket on that that I had painted a big red skull on the back, and you know that's why George approached me and said, like, "Oh, are you an artist?" And I go, oh, "Yeah." <laughs> you know, I didn't know who he was. He didn't work there, and I was just like, "Why is this guy talking to me?" <laughs> when George approached you about getting like a steady job working at a magazine, was that like, was that, did that seem like a big opportunity? Is that why you took it? It did. Well, 
you know, I, I liked video games and, and, and it's funny, I was not really a video game magazine subscriber or, you know, I didn't really buy EGM or, or the other ones out there. And so he, he said that he and a, a few people were putting together a, a magazine. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, sure. Yeah, I'll go down and check it out. And, you know, I met with Dave and the, the infamous, Hey, can you airbrush? Oh yeah. <laughs> Of course I can. <laughs> <laughs> I owned an airbrush. Um, and for some of my animation, you know, I, I inked and painted my own cells for this other project. And I would use the airbrush for effects like smoke or, you know, bursts of light or something. So I, I never really did, you know, full on airbrush illustration per se. Mm -hmm. But I knew how to use an airbrush. <laughs> When I had a, I had a teacher at, at college that brought in speakers and this one speaker was like, Hey, if you, if you're up for a job and they ask if you can do something, just, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's win, within reason, you know? Yeah, like, sure. You know, if it's like welding or something, you're going to say yes. <laughs> yeah. you're digging a hole there. An but, airbrush, uh, it's kind of like a torch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It could be just fill it with the right ingredients. <laughs> So I was asking some of my coworkers, some of the girls I worked with, like, should I take it? Should I take this job? I, I don't know how to be an art director. I'm like, I know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to art direct a magazine. I was like, just do it. Just do it. I'll figure it out. I'm like, okay. <laughs> they wanted to have a mascot character every month on the cover, kind of like Famitsu, I think. Yeah. In this case, it was Monitor, you know, the guy yeah. the team did. So they wanted an airbrushed look. And I said, sure, I can do that. And then, you know, after meeting with them, went to the nearest art store, picked up that kit on how to how to do airbrush illustration. Yeah. <laughs> went home and practiced it. And uh, yeah, that, that first project I did was terrible. Oh, was really? Just, you think so? Yeah, they wanted me to airbrush a Sonic the Hedgehog. Um. I think Bonk was one of them? Bonk was one of them, yeah. Kind of like a section header called uh, Savage Amusement. And <laughs> and it had uh, one of the guys from one of the fighter games. Um, not Street Fighter, the other guy, Joe something. Uh, 92? Maybe like Fatal Fury, Joe Higashi? <laughs> Maybe. He had the, the baseball hat. Oh, Terry, yeah, from Fatal Fury. Terry Bogart. Okay. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So he's like doing a punch and there's like lightning. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that from the first issue. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was very enthusiastic. I think I met Greg off too. I think he was there. I don't know. I just, I just got a, a feel, a vibe that the energy was, was, was just very positive. And you know, you could, you could, you could sense their enthusiasm. What was your first impressions of Dave? <laughs> uh, you know, he, he seemed like a nice guy. The very first meeting, um, you know, there wasn't any, you know, hairs standing up in the back of my neck or anything like that. <laughs> you, know? Uh, you know, he's easy to talk to and, you know, also enthusiastic about games and, and about what the magazine was going to be. And his excitement was very in infectious, if that's the right word. <laughs> sure, yeah. Later on, you know, things would change as far as that goes. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Was there a point where you kind of realized things were kind of run a little strangely at the company, or? <laughs> yeah, he, he wanted to bring me on full time, and back then, I think he offered me six hundred a week, which I was like, okay. And then I go to pick up my first paycheck, and it was only five hundred a week. I'm like, oh, I thought you promised me six hundred a week. It's like, oh, well, that's if you come in on Saturday. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> most people don't do a, a six day work week, but all right. Was there a contract? No, there was not a contract. It was I just think. verbal. Yeah. Huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like I said, I was 23, 24, you know, whatever. So I, I brought in my own desk and a chair from my you know, and my, my own airbrush kit, my own compressor and supplied, you know, brought in my own stuff that they paid for the paints and stuff. So my desk was on the other side of this, this door. And on, you know, you, you'd have to walk all the way around 
to get into where Dave and, and the one computer was that they, they made the whole magazine on. And there was one day I overheard him saying something to maybe Andrew Cockburn or, or someone else about paychecks were going to be late or, or, or something about the pay. And so I, 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 you know, after that meeting, I kind of went in, I go, oh, hey, Dave, so are, are we not getting paid? I forget what it was. And he said, oh, I never said that. And I'm like, oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> kind of heard you through the door. <laughs> and then he kind of, there was a beat like, oh yeah, well, it's just because, you know, X, Y, Z, but th there wasn't really any money problems in the beginning for, for a little while, for me at least. I don't know about anyone else. M mostly I kept to myself because I was, you know, I had my little breathing mask on and, you know, headphones usually because the compressor was like, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, I, I do my work and then I go home and then all the craziness would happen with everything being written, you know, three nights before the magazine was due. And, you know. I wanted to ask you about all the little characters, the little personas that the writers would have uh, in yes. the magazine. So what was, what would, what exactly was the process for coming up with those and implementing? Uh, a lot of times the, um, each editor would have their want. Um, but er early on, Dave kind of dictated a little bit too, like, well, he's going to be this. But like Kaylee, he wanted to be, you know, kind of a Bruce Lee with the, you know, street fighter, you know, clothes and the karate gear. Andrew Cockburn was the inquirer. That was his name. They didn't really have an idea. So I just kind of made it look kind of like Andrew, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like they needed a a guy, a crazy mascot character that would uh, read the mail every month, like would a answer the mail. So we, we, we came up with the postmeister and I just went home and drew this crazy, weird looking guy with goggles and, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of times people would say like, Oh, I want to be like, I want to be a knight and have a chainsaw for an arm. And, and so I, like, okay, that sounds cool. You know, that was nightmare. So yeah, David, David Hodgkin's uh, character. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did you worked on the the Adventures of Monitor comic? Yes. Yeah. So you were just like, was that that was that was all you doing all the illustration? Yeah, and that was my idea too because they they needed pages to fill, and I was like, <laughs> hey, how about we do like a little like a little comic strip, you know, maybe a page or two, and 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 they're like, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Put monitor in it and and we you know came up monitors like the hero of you know i'm going to protect the gamer from bad games you know yeah. very kind of tongue-in-cheek and goofy and funny and you know it, it was fun like dave liked them and people around the office like that and a lot of the readers liked that comic strip but then if one person wrote a letter saying like oh you know that Adventures of Monitor is stupid. You guys should get rid of that. It's just a waste of space. And, and Dave's like, oh, okay, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to not do that anymore. So, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It's... So, you know, it became more sporadic and then it, it stopped for a little while. And then, then we brought it back after, I think after Dave left. One of the things that really struck me about the magazine and one of the reasons like the story overall was so compelling to me was that it really had a lot of personality like other magazines gaming magazines at the time they had like you know they had editorials you know little little spots of personality and stuff uh but game fan was just full of these illustrations and these this comic and storyline and all these characters and and it was all yeah. your art style so it all felt right. really like consistent you really gave it a lot of a lot of character and i think there's probably a lot of people who read it as kids or young adults and and you're kind of like almost the face of <laughs> uh of game fan for those people um oh thank you yeah i mean i i'm i'm pleased to hear that yes um I mean, especially needing a cover every month that was unique, you know, I definitely would say that, yeah, I, I kind of helped create that style. You know, I didn't come up with the idea for having the, the avatars, but um, 
you know, as time went on, you know, I'd be like, hey, how about we do this for a, a character? Like I, I invented a handful of, of guys. Um, I don't know if you remember Sergeant Gamer, you know, he's some crazy Vietnam helicopter pilot that got into gaming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, most of the storylines, you know, they would say like, hey, we need a story about where the, you know, the adventures of Monarchs where they go into like a doom kind of scenario where they, they're in the catacombs. And, and so, you know, I would kind of come up with the ideas and the dialogue and every now and then I'd say like, Oh, you know, what should a guy say here? But I mean, good or bad, it was, it was pretty much mostly me. <laughs> um, and, and the stories did get, tend to get kind of weird towards the end. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if you've read all of them, but <laughs> I mean, I glanced through them and, and, a couple of them as I was as I was reading through. I remember particularly, I think one of the last ones where like everyone died or something. Yeah. Well, that was the exodus of Dave mm -hmm. and the the villain of Monitor and Game Fan was a like an entity called the Blowmeister. Like yeah. sometimes it was a guy, sometimes it was just his corporate whatever, and they were out to sell bad games to people. And that was their whole thing. So, so they were always trying to stop game fan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he sent like, he sent like this weird, you think it's a child, but it turns out to be this weird, strange guy and they fight him. And then it turns out he has a bomb inside him and he <laughs> blows up the building. <laughs> and so all the people that left to go to Dave Halverson's new magazine yeah. ended up dying in the yeah. storyline. <laughs> Except E Storm. He yeah. was he was brain damaged. For, oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Jay Perrier's character was a uh, kid fantastic and he's like, I've got some bad news. <laughs> e Storm's alive, but but he's now a vegetable. <laughs> we cut to him. <laughs> so we took a lot of a lot of stabs and like, okay, yeah, <laughs> you can leave. Well, did you um, did you share the kind of negative outlook a lot of people had of of Dave at the time? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, he could be a really likable, gregarious guy. You know, he was fun to talk to. He was funny, but yeah, you you just never knew where you stood with him. And you know, like other people have said, he. He'd say one thing to you and then turn around and say something completely different to someone else. And uh, all the stories from your documentary on, on Game Fan are completely true. Like the money problems. The, mm -hmm. There was like a, a line where you could just type in random amounts. Like because you'd, you'd have to say like, oh, I'm trying to cash a check for X amount of money. Like I'm trying to cash a check for five grand. Yes. It'll clear. Okay. And then you call back. I'm trying to cash a check for 10 grand. That'll clear. I'm trying to cash a check for 20 grand. Oh, that's not okay. There's at least 10 grand in the end. We'd all <laughs> run to the cars and drive down there. And I wow. can remember being in line at the teller. You know, there's another employee at the next teller. You go, <laughs> you hand him the paycheck. I'd like to cash this. I'd like cash, please. Like, oh, first you check. She she checked him out. Okay, now it's in there. I'll get my manager to sign off on this. Then she comes back, checks again. Oh, I'm sorry. The money's no longer in. There. Like someone like beat you by a second. <laughs> You're looking you at look the, yeah, the whole time. <laughs> you know you can't be mad at that guy, but if you just like yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> and I, I just want to say, like, I don't have any ill will towards Dave. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. Um, I don't hate him. Um, you know, I, I was very upset at the time, obviously, but you know, I've, I've put all that behind me. Um, I, I, I remember all the stuff that happened, but you know, I, I guess, I, I guess you could say I've, I've forgiven and, and moved on. So, um, and I have bumped into him a couple of times at E3 and, you know, it was pleasant, you know, didn't try to <laughs> attack him or anything. <laughs> so yeah. just saying that I'm harboring no ill ill will towards any of the people involved. <laughs> okay. I actually was being courted by Metropolis publications run by David Bergstein. Mm -hmm. Um, cause Dave was like seeing some of the work I was doing. He's like, Oh, we got to get Terry back. We got to get Terry back. And 
So yeah, Dave wants to get you back. And what we want to do is put you in charge of the video game development division of game. And I'm like, what? Like actually making and developing video games? They wanted to create a video game development wing to the game fan empire. And so, you know, I was like, well, yeah, that's interesting. Let me know. And 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 it was kind of, you know, back and forth for a few months. Like, yeah, I'm like, well, if you're serious and blah, 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 and let me know. And, and they did eventually put something together for me, you know, a package and saying like, I'd be the president of this company, basically. You know, so I was 26. So I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, this Sounds amazing. You had no game development experience or business no. experience. <laughs> Just no, I knew oh, how to man. design characters. <laughs> yeah, you see where this is going, but like the money was crazy. So I was like, okay, well, all right. Okay. Got a lawyer, had him look over the contract. We went back and forth, signed the contract. And then, you know, because at the time it seemed like Metropolis had gotten game fan running, you know, smoothly. They were actually making money and able to pay their print bills and he he was clearing up a lot of the the back debt that they had accrued and and finding out ways to get more money in and getting people to pay up debt and so it was like it, it seemed like game fan was 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 doing a lot better you know so i'm i'm trying to put together a team for this video game company found a producer and hired an art buddy of mine and this producer hired a few buddies of his but then you know things just stopped happening mm -hmm. and david bergstein start stop taking my calls and i'd have to go down to the office to get a hold of him like hey well you know what's what's going on and long story short the producer i hired like got into david's ear about i wasn't very significant to the company and David was like, yeah, oh, no, yeah, Terry's not significant, you know. This is uh, Dave Halverson or Bergstein? Bergstein. Ah. And, you know, the name of the company changed and no longer was going to be a game that I wanted to make. It was a game that this guy wanted to make. And, and me, you know, meanwhile, we, we had like one computer, no programmers. <laughs> like, you know, I was, I was tasked to find the building uh handle parking you know <laughs> like uh, like what you know, i'm supposed to be putting together a creative team can you get someone else to figure out who's going to pay for the parking spaces <laughs> it was a very frustrating experience and this yeah. this producer i hired ended up turning out to be a little rat so i was like okay well i saw the writing on the raw wall I, I talked to my friend i'm like hey i'm i'm going back to game fan and and i'm, I'm sorry but you know He's like, do what you got to do, man, you know. And not long after, the, this video game production company, uh, you know, folded. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, all right, have fun. <laughs> that's, that's it, a, it was very disappointing. That's such a, I never even heard anything about that <laughs> in all my research. Oh, yeah, I mean, no. why would you? They never made anything. So. Yeah, it was just this, all these weird yeah. little side stories. Um, they they did publish one game only through, you know, this producer guy it was like, they, they looked around for other projects in development that were in trouble financially. And so mm -hmm. they found one and like, okay, we go in and we just fund them and they finish the game and we get to put our name on it. You know, huh. what were they called? The company? <laughs> uh, the company was called the design league. The design league. <laughs> I know, not I have, not my idea. I have to just... look that up now. <laughs> the LSD story. <laughs> if I could just get your perspective on that. So it was one of the rare nights where I was there working late, and Cybermorph had come in, and it was being <laughs> reviewed and played. So G D Dave would usually play the game, and he'd have someone doing screen caps, which would have to be George Weising. I think Tim Tim might have been there too. And, you know, a handful of other people. And I just remember, you know, I was, I was finishing up some stuff and I was, I was getting ready to go home. And I just remember Dave going like, this, this game, it, it knows what you're thinking. And he's just, those little, the little enemies, they know, they know, 
They can sense my thoughts. They knew I was going to do that. And like, I'm just like, wow. And I'm looking at the game like, oh, it's, it's kind of cool. It's 3D. And I was like, this is... I don't, I don't remember George, you know, tripping out that much, but yeah, Dave was just, he was just, <laughs> he was just burning. <laughs> like, like, I they know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put two and two together. I'd never done hard driving like that. <laughs> oh, so so I guess what happened was how they found out it was Andrew that spiked the coffee. He was joking around about it that day. Like he had just <laughs> scored some tabs or something and was like, oh, we should drop some in the coffee. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> and I think it was like, I don't know, it was Kay Kaboki or... or or someone was like, hey, I, I heard Andrew, you know, because the next day they were just like, oh, what was that? And and George had done those things and was like, no, someone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know this feeling that that wasn't yeah. just out of the loop. <laughs> so he found out Andrew Spike and yeah, he, he wanted to kill him. He was just. Yes. And Jay, you know, Jay was kind of the managing guy, you know, Dave was editor-in-chief publisher but jay was managing it or something but he you know kind of second in command he's like dave you got to get rid of andrew like like you, you got fired <laughs> so he was fired for like a month or two or but then he, he got brought back on yeah <laughs> and yeah there was a weird thing with with andrew but, but he, he liked these younger guys he just these kids <laughs> he was a kid like uh-huh when I first started working there, I don't think Andrew was even 18 yet. He might have been 17 or something. Yeah, 16 or 17, I think, when he got Yeah, hired. something like that. <laughs> and a very kind of aggressive, in-your-face, like, yeah? Huh? Huh? <laughs> it's like, easy. <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> I have a driver's license. I can drive. I can run you over. Uh, well, he did hit He did hit a jogger oh, that yeah, one yeah, time. That's right. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, he it was knows. Bizarre story after bizarre story. He could hit you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, he got hit in the parking lot. Did anyone see the driver? I think it was Cogburn. <laughs> Holy! Oh my god! Yeah. yeah, and he he went to Japan <laughs> on the fake visa. It it was Guile, Guile Rig from Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, Riggs because. A uh, lethal weapon was popular at the time, like, and yeah, it was unbelievable. Uh, he got into some serious trouble, like, y you know, it was either FBI or, or some heavy government officials. Like, all right, you need to meet us at our offices. We need to talk about this. And they basically said, "Look, basically, no one knows you're here right now, and you." You, you know, the, the pretense was we could make you disappear because this passport shows you don't exist. Like, Whoa. Yeah, it was like this big, and he came back like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was scared straight. Wow. Yeah. So I want I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you end up leaving Game Fan, and, and was it on good terms? After the shutdown, the lockdown when the sheriffs, I mean, that, that was kind of it, I think, at, at least for a while. And I think I just started looking for other jobs and I, I found a job in video game development with <clears throat> WayForward Technologies and they were looking for an animator. Do you mean a 3D animator? And like, no, no, regular animator. No, no. I actually am qualified for that. And so I went down there and a couple of the other guys there had graduated from CalArts. So like, so was... Did that for about a year. What game was that? They were doing like com computer game, like PC games, like nothing amazing. Uh, <laughs> like they were doing like learning adventure type, you know, kind of kid games. Okay. The King and I learning adventure, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Lost in Space, the movie had just come out. So there was like a huh. Lost in Space math game. You know? <laughs> yeah. Do you think you learned anything valuable from your time at Game Fan? Uh, I learned to get things in writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be, yeah. And to be very wary of 
<laughs> amazing things that are offered you. <laughs> They're too good to be true. They, they might actually be. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I can't complain. It set me on a path. And uh, I think the reason I did a little better than most people, you know, when people's paychecks were bouncing and, you know, there's a lot of guys that were struggling where they was like, we, they needed that paycheck. And, but, you know, I had my name out there a little bit and people would hit me up to do a, a game ad or a magazine cover or a box cover. So, you know, I did a handful of that too, freelance wise. You know, I, I did learn how to uh, illustrate in Photoshop because I, right. I, I had not done that before. And to game fans credit, or I should say to, to Tim Lindquist's credit, like he had the idea like to do all desktop publishing because that no other magazine was doing that. I don't yeah. think. Um, and then everyone started doing it. But I remember asking him one day, like, oh, so that little airbrush icon that works like an airbrush, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, Yeah. You can change this the pressure and sensitivities. He's like, Yeah. I'm like, oh, is there a way to mask off certain areas? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> so, I'm like, huh. Do you think maybe I could get on and just fool around with this for a little bit? And he's like, oh, absolutely. And and so he was a big champion of getting me to to do uh digital illustration. And and so I think I think I was one of the first people doing that too. I, I don't know of many. There there was a yeah. couple. And I was doing it all with a mouse. One thing I thought was really cool is that, and I have no idea how common this is, but uh, you are actually colorblind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know how common it is either. I, the people I've told have, have usually been surprised. <laughs> you know, I, I said massively colorblind. I'm, I'm, I'm not massively colorblind, but it's, I am colorblind. I, I forget what it is, the red green spectrum or something, but like certain uh, color, color intensities, a red can look brown or a green can look brown or uh you know a purple can look blue you know it's 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 funny because a lot of my personal art you know i i do uh portraits of pop art and pop culture stuff and monsters yeah <laughs> a lot of my colors are, are kind of saturated but you know i kind of it dawned on me like oh yeah it's so i can see them you know <laughs> oh <laughs> like if, if the color saturation is is subtle then it's like ah oh, is that gray or is that green uh, you know, just <laughs> that's famous. really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, though. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I think that's really cool. It's like a necessity for you. <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, it's, it's my profession is working with color. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's happened a few times where I've been kind of called out like, like, what are you doing? Why can't you fix the, the stupid thing I'm asking you to fix? And I'm like, I'm colorblind. <laughs> It happened once at Stan Winston. I was I was doing some working on color schemes for the 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 dinosaurs for Jurassic Park to the Lost World, and I was working with one of the sculptors, and he uh, and he was like, "Yeah, maybe just get rid of that orange area that you have in there." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And I'm just and he comes back later. Like, oh no, I, I wanted you to get rid of that orange area. I'm like, oh 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 yeah, got it. <laughs> no, like <laughs> he didn't catch it. Kind of like what you're up to now in your current artwork, what you've been doing the last couple of years. You know, at one point I got into uh wanting to kind of do my own stuff. And uh I don't know, I've always liked monsters and one of the offices I worked at was right up the street from a place called Halloween Town in Burbank. And we'd get lunch and, and then we'd walk around there and, and duck into Halloween Town. And they had cool art books and cool art. And and I found out they were doing art shows. So I was like, oh, hey, hey, I, I'm interested in doing the next art show. And, and you know, here's my work. And I, I had like a, you know, a little website, like a blog that had some of my paintings on it. And the owner of the store got back to me. She's like, oh, my God, I, I'd love to have you. And, and these are great. And, and also, would you mind if I if I, you know, if we carry the prints of these in, in our store, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So, and so I just started doing stuff like that and, and really got into the whole, you know, fine art world. And so now I'm, I'm doing that a lot. And I do a lot of commission, commission paintings now. And um, 
you know, my my work through Stan Winston's studio uh, has has let me o- opened a lot of doors for me. You know, being in that monster world in the you know monster shop and creature shop kind of place. So yeah, I just freelance art uh, and opportunities come up where I just have have lucked into other avenues. Um, <laughs> doing a lot of uh, stuff now, like opening credits for film. And closing credits for film, you know, the special credits at the end of a movie, you know, yeah. they sometimes do artwork. I've done a handful of those. And uh, uh, my wife and I are now working together on those. She's an art director and graphic designer. And she has done movie posters in her previous careers. So some of the movies have been uh, like, if you see the end credits for Doolittle with Robert Downey Jr. Oh. I did I did a ton of the the these portrait paintings in in that one um the opening for uh clifford the big red dog i did these pencil sketches that kind of turn into watercolor and then they turn into the cityscape and then at the end of the film i did all the pencil sketches that kind of get painted with watercolor during the closing credits like i said i've always been very ambitious i I always try to improve my my work and <laughs> always practicing, always trying to get better. <laughs> I, I can't see myself doing anything else. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I feel the same way. Well, I, I'd say you're on your way, man. Thank you're you. 22 and you're already putting together these awesome pieces. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I No, it really is like an honor because yeah. I, this might sound funny, but Game fan was my life for like six months. <laughs> I nice. spent just working on making that whole that whole series, that whole documentary. Besides the people who lived through it, I am probably the world's foremost expert on game fan history. <laughs> it seems like you you found pictures of ECM that I've never seen before. I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, you 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 did a deep dive. I, I was impressed. Like a lot of the game cave stuff, you know, I was aware of it. I wasn't involved so much. Mm-hmm. I knew a lot of the people that were. So yeah, it was kind of interesting hearing some information from you. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the original cover. Whoa. First cover. <laughs> and on the back is that's how I transferred it to my illustration board. Whoa, that is awesome. Old school. Um, oh, here, here we go. My first test. Whoa, this is so, I can't believe you just had that right off camera. <laughs> so, well, I, it's in a file cabinet. I've, sure. I've had collectors, uh, I've had collectors hit me up in the recent years. Like they, they find me and, and I've sold a lot of my original airbrush art. Like on this, you'll, you'll recognize this one. Oh, that's K. Yeah. Yeah. Special <laughs> K. And then look, there's there's the Sergeant Gamer character. Yes, oh, that was Sergeant Gamer. Yeah, I know I recognize the character. Oh, one of my favorites, Postmeister. Nice. <laughs> and uh, Haley. Haley, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I got I got a handful of stuff left. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, before we go, uh, where can anyone watching uh, find your stuff? Where are you at? Uh, let's see. If you go to wolfinger.bigcartel.com, you can see all my monster prints. Um, and I I regularly show my work at Monster Palooza in Pasadena and Burbank. And I'm starting to do other conventions now. I just did CreepyCon in uh, Ontario, California. Uh, you can you can purchase my work at Halloween Town in Burbank, California. Uh, you can contact me through the Big Cartel site, and I'm open for commissions and whatnot. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone be sure to go check out uh, Terry's stuff. <laughs> You're a wonderfully talented artist. Thank and you. And an important part of the, the game fan history. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. That's that's good to know. Hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully I won't get any phone calls from any Daves after this. <laughs> 